Hey guys, it's Kristen and Bethany, Bethany here. And we are so excited to be chatting with you guys today. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Boom. If you want to see more from us, subscribe below. Boom. And if you want to support our channel, you can on patreon.com slash build find. Just click the link below. We are really excited today to get to be diving into part one of a four part series that we're going to oh, be yeah. doing with you guys. And it's going to be based off of our new book, mm -hmm. Sex Purity and the Longings of a Girl's mm -hmm. Heart, Discovering the Beauty and Freedom of God Defined Sexuality. And I think that as Christians so mm -hmm. often, we have, and I know I've done this, we have our sexuality and our spirituality, right? And we and have separate. <laughs> two separate things and we think of our sexuality and how we think about it, view it, our worldview, how we make choices, how we process things. Yeah. Then we have our spirituality and we have God and we have that side of things. Yeah. But when we look in scripture, what we see is that God created us to be spiritual beings and sexual mm. beings and he designed us for those things to be merged. That yeah. a spiritual and sexual go together and it's a part of who God created us to yeah. be as people and talk about what is God's design for sexuality? What does that look like to yeah. be spiritual, to be sexual, to bring God into the picture? What does he have to say about it? Yeah. Who did he create us to be? And we also want you to know that if you don't hold to a Christian worldview, that we invite you to mm -hmm. stick around. We're so glad you're watching this video and we, in we invite you to join in on this conversation. I think it's going to be a really great next four weeks. Talking about sexuality is something every single one of us can relate to because we're all sexual beings, mm -hmm. right? Like whether you're young, old, single, married, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We are all sexual by design. And so as we enter this conversation about sexuality, something that every single one of us can relate to, I think as Christian women, it's so important that as we think about how we're defining it, how we're viewing it, what it means, what mm -hmm. its purpose is, how we handle our desires, as we think about all things regarding our sexuality, it is so important for us as Christian women to go back to the author and creator mm -hmm. of sexuality, and that is God. He's totally. the designer of it. And when you look around this world, like I'm looking outside right now and I see the trees yeah. blowing and the wind and we have the water, sky and the mountains, clouds. we have creation, right? Yeah. And God, as we see in Genesis, created all of creation and including humans, right? Yeah. So he created all things on purpose and for a purpose. And their ultimate purpose is that we would, all of creation would reflect God, point yeah. back to him in some way or another. But like I said before, we so often separate our sexuality from that, but God actually created us as humans on purpose with a sexual design yeah. so that our sexual design would also point back to him. Which is pretty amazing because he... He cares about this yes, area of our life does. so much. And I think that's something that I like to remember. It's not a curse. It's not right. a terrible part of our life. And it's like, not something God is turning a blind eye to. No. Like, oh, I don't want to see that. I don't want to talk about that. I'm embarrassed yeah. by that. He cares about it deeply. So I think that helps me a lot in thinking about this. Is like, wow, God was intentional with this. He cares about it. He cares about my questions. Right. He cares about my concerns. And so I think in going back yeah. to Genesis, it helps set that foundation like, he really cares about us. Right. You he know. cares about us so much, in fact, and gave us yeah. the gift of sexuality. And so as we rewind in time, something I like to think about is imagine a blank chalkboard, right? We've all had chalkboards. They're really yes. popular. <laughs> I have them all over my house. And yeah. imagine a blank chalkboard. You as the creator can put whatever you want on that chalkboard. You mm -hmm. get to design it. And that's how it was with God in the beginning. He had a blank slate. There was nothing. And yeah. he, as the creator, decided what he was going to put on that chalkboard. So we rewind back in time to Genesis 1 quickly. And this is what we see mm -hmm. God deciding to put on that blank chalkboard. In Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it says, Then God said, Let us make man, so mankind, in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping mm -hmm. thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So from the beginning, yeah. God, the creator of the universe, so intentionally designed a male and a female, and they were fully sexual. Yeah. They had desires, they had longings, but at this point in time, they were perfect. So there was Wouldn't no that be nice. there was no heartache, <laughs> right? There was no pain, there was no questions, there was no yeah. shame, it was perfectly beautiful. We have a man, we have a woman, and they're both very, very sexual. Mm -hmm. And that was God's good design for us from the beginning. Then we zoom a little bit forward yeah. and we see in Genesis 2, 24, I'm just doing a quick flyover. It says, <laughs> therefore yeah. a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So literally from Genesis 1 to Genesis 2, we see God creating male and female. We see sexuality come into existence. Then we see God creating marriage and putting the man and the woman yeah. together and creating this thing called marriage. And then they shall become one flesh. Yes. So sex literally enters the scene in Genesis 2. And that's something we think, like we said, yes, oh, like, don't want to talk about it. It's already there. And so from the beginning yeah. in a perfect world, before anything went wrong, 
God created man and woman, he designed marriage, and he created sex to be a intricate part of his design. And then we fast forward one chapter later and we get to Genesis 3 mm -hmm. and it's literally called the fall. And so if you haven't, if you're not familiar with this, I'm not going to read the whole chapter because it yes, would be a be lot, long. but go back and literally read Genesis 1, 2, yeah. and 3. I think you'll find it really interesting as you for yourself see all of this unfolding, but we get to Genesis 3 and everything takes yeah. a bad turn. We see for the first time God's perfect world sin entering because Adam and Eve chose to disobey God. And as soon as they disobeyed him, they sinned against him. That perfect relationship was yeah. broken. Everything in creation became marred and distorted by sin. And that includes the humans. Yeah. So their desires, their longings, their perspective on things, yeah. everything became distorted and confused. Selfishness entered the scene, lust entered the scene, and their sexuality yeah. was greatly distorted by sin. And so as we fast forward today, we as women are still affected by the yeah. sin in our lives. And that's why we struggle. But thankfully, that's not where the story ends. It doesn't end yeah. in Genesis 3. God had a plan even then. If you read through the whole Bible to the New Testament to bring a savior into the world to make what went wrong right. So that's coming. We're yes. going to get to that in there the later sections of this. But for now, we just need to recognize that as we look at our sexuality today, it has been greatly affected by sin. So as you're sitting there right now, you may be thinking, and I know I am thinking this too, like, yeah, I've experienced that confusion or that, um, like just imperfectness yeah. really like my selfish desires, even doing things where I think I, or I know, like, I know this is wrong. I don't want to do this, but it's hard. And I end up doing it anyways. And if you are anything like the two of us, <laughs> yeah. you've experienced that because there is no one perfect on this earth. So we all struggle in the area of sexuality and struggle with our perspective on sex and God and how this all comes together. And it's hard. And I just want to say that like, yes, it is hard. And we get that. And we want you to know, like, you're not alone. You're not in alone. That. In we are this. right there. We're right there with mm -hmm. you. And that's why we want to talk about it because I think for far too long, yeah. there haven't been enough conversations about this. Yeah. And I think as a result, it's almost made us feel like, you know, like, okay, maybe I am the only one right. struggling or maybe no one else has ever experienced yeah. this or I would never want to talk about this because I bet none of these other mm -hmm. women have ever felt this or ever had a thought like this. Rest your soul because that's not true. Every single woman on the earth struggles in some way because of sin. And so I look forward to the day when we are all redeemed and perfected and there are no more questions and confusions and struggles and selfishness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah for that day. But we still live on this earth. And so we need the hope of God's word to guide us, to help us know what's true. How so to we navigate can, our struggles. Yeah, how we can navigate yeah. them and how to define them according to his good and perfect plan. But if you're sitting there and you're thinking, wow, I would love to know like, what have other women struggled mm -hmm. with so that I can know I'm not alone. We actually took a survey on this topic of sex and sexuality of over 450 women. So we sent out a survey before we wrote our book, Sex, Purity, and the Longings of a Girl's Heart to say what, we know what we've struggled with, but what have y'all struggled with? What are your questions? What do you want to know about? And I just want to read you a few of the things that they said. And I hope this is not to say like, hey, look, look at what they're doing, but just to kind of offer you some hope, like, we're in this together. So here's what one woman said. She said, I've never experienced much temptation for physical purity, but the battle for purity in my mind and heart is constant. In the past, I've struggled a lot to keep my thoughts pure and honorable towards God and the men in my life in the midst of a sex saturated world. And another Christian woman says, honestly, it feels so good to read erotic stories, at least in the moment. But I know from personal experience that after the fact, I feel so empty and unsatisfied. I feel guilty. I get so angry at myself because after each time, I pray and repent and cry and ask the Lord to help me stop. But then I keep doing it. I find myself excusing and justifying it, and then I'm in the same place again. But I really want to stop reading this stuff. So I think the bottom line in all of this is that we all struggle in one way or another, and it may look different, a little bit different, just like for each one of these women, it looks different for each one of the two of us. It looked different for you. It looks different. And I think that we all long for that restoration and that hope and that freedom, freedom. that only God can bring. And in our book, sex purity and the longings of a girl's heart, we say this, sometimes it can be easy for us to think that we're the only ones struggling, but we're not, as we just saw, each one of us carries our own burdens. Each one of us is wrestling with our own sexual struggles. 
Each one of us is in desperate need of sexual restoration. So instead of continuing to believe the lie that we are the only ones who struggle, the only ones who have experienced pain and shame, mm-hmm. and we don't know how to handle it or process it, we need to get open. Yeah. We as Christian women need to start talking about this more. I know in our lives over the years, as we've been honest about things, spoken up, shared, brought things into the light and invited others yeah. in to walk the journey with us and totally. to help us navigate the confusion and point us back to God's truth. That is when yeah. we experience the most hope and freedom because we were being steered back towards God's yeah. good design. And that is what the next four weeks of this video series are aimed yeah. to do for us as Christian women to say, God is a good God. Sin has messed things up. Totally. My heart is inclined to go against God's design, but what God has for me is actually truly yeah. for my best. And so our hope is that we can put back together our sexuality, yeah. our spirituality. God cares so much about this area mm-hmm. of our lives. And as you're going to discover, he has a lot of great things yeah. to say about it. He wants to meet us right yeah. there. And so as we put those things back together, let's learn on this journey and continue this conversation as we discover together God's incredible mm. and beautiful design for our sexuality. Thank y'all so much for watching this video, for joining in on this conversation. We know it can be a tough one. So we are just thankful that you're willing to be a part of this. And we hope that you will join us next week for part two, as we really dig deep into God's good design for our sexuality. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Is that my lip stuff? Mm-mm. What is it? It's my own. Oh, you felt like I was bullets? Yes! <laughs> no, oh, no. talking to yes. <laughs> I like I didn't expand too much. I was so proud of myself. That sin. Uh, okay. Maybe. And ask the Lord, <clears throat> what's happening? It's switching all of a sudden like it's moving. <laughs> no, wait, I had it and then it went away. Just-